Hi, and welcome to this demo of Turnitin version 2. Um, as you can see, I'm just on a standard Moodle course, and I'm going to go ahead and turn editing on so we can get started. So you'll see I've preset up something called assessment as the topic, and I'm just going to add an activity resource as I would normally. Now I'm going to select turn in version 2. Um, what well, after the migration, there will only be one version, but if you do want to do this before then, just to play around and get used to it, then do make sure you're selecting version 2, um, and then just add as you would normally. Um, next, we will see the settings screen again. Would this would normally happen with any other version of Turnitin or assignment? So I'm going to give it a name. Um, it's best if this can be descriptive; it just helps people find it. Um, and if it's unique, so you don't have a load of submit here links, um, and it can be confusing which is the correct one. Um, so I'm just going to call it a demo submission, um, and put that in there. You can then add in a summary. This would normally be assignment instructions or perhaps an assignment brief. Um, you may want to copy it across from an existing source. Um, and again, a little bit of instruction here can just be useful for students. Um, before they submit, they can make sure that they know what they're doing correctly. So I'm just going to put in that this is a demo for Turnitin um, version 2 for tutors and course administrators. Um, and then I'm just going to correct my spelling here, uh, make sure I've spelled everything correctly. So that's all good now. Um, yeah, turn it in just isn't really a recognised word. Um, so then I can come down and see a lot of standard settings here um, that you may recognise if you've used turn it in version one before. So I can se select the submission type, number of parts. Um, I can do anonymous marking. So I can turn this off, but I'm going to leave it on, which is the default. Um, I can select any file type. Again, I'm going to leave this on, although I could turn it off. Um, and then I'll see that there's some other bits. Um, grade display is slightly different. I can choose to have a percentage or a fraction. I'm going to leave the default for this demo um, and just scroll down and then we can have a little look at these grade settings. So you can now choose to have a point or a scale. Um, if you do choose a scale, it won't be available within the grade mark. So when you're actually marking the assignment online, you will still have to put in a numeric mark. Um, it will just convert this for display purposes within the submission inbox. So it's a little bit better, but still not ideal. So I'm just going to leave it as point for this demo. Um, moving on, one of the really cool things about version 2 of Turnitin is that you can set up all the dates within the initial settings. This just makes it a little quicker and easier um, and less confusing. So start date, normally leave it as is it is post date we we're going to want to make sure this is in the future um, as once the post date passes or assignments will be unanonymized so I want to make sure that this is definitely after the due date um, and the due date I'm just going to leave um, for the purposes of this example originality reports this is again mostly the same as version 1 however you'll see that there are some notes just reminding you things like that it takes 24 hours for any resubmission to generate a report useful if you get questions from students um, and most of these check settings I'm going to leave these alone I would normally do this with version 1 as well um, just kind of use the standards you can always change it within the document viewer uh, when you're actually viewing the originality report if you want to um, grade mark options, so I can choose to attach a rubric again from within the settings, so that can be quite useful. Um, I've got the launch editor over here if I want to quickly edit the rubrics, or I can choose from this drop down list um, which rubric I want to attach. So I will just quickly attach a rubric for the purposes of this demo. We can then see it later, so just an example. Um, and then I'm going to move on. So common module settings is something that you have all the time. Um, groups won't actually allow you to do group submissions, but it can be useful for filtering the inbox. And then restrict access, again, fairly standard. Um, if I did want to add any other restrictions, but I'm just going to save um, and display so we can have a look at the inbox now. So this shouldn't take too long to load, although obviously it can vary depending on internet speed. So that's come up now. So you can see it look, does look a bit different than version one. Um, it's all kind of in one screen. So there are these two tabs here, tutors and students. Those can be ignored. Those are only really if you're using it via the web, which we don't support at UCL. We only support via um, Moodle. So just worry about this submission inbox tab here. Um, and you can edit the settings again with this update button um, as you normally would in any Turnitin assignment. Um, one cool thing that you will see is that 
Um, you can edit the dates in here if you wanted to quickly edit them. So I can just, you know, maybe push the due date a bit sooner um, and change that there. So that's quite quick and easy to edit. Um, and then export would appear there after the post date. Um, and I can also edit rubrics and quick marks from here. Again, just a quick way to get in and do a little bit of tweaking. If I come down into the inbox, I will then see that I've got various different things. Um, so I can search for, uh, if I need like a candidate number or something, I can choose how many to display over here. Refresh it if I ever needed to do that. Email non-submitters. So if I've got anonymous marking on, this can be quite useful. Um, you'll see that I have anonymous marking enabled, so all of the names are blanked out. Um, you can see where all the other details would appear um, once the submission had been made. So now you can see what it would look like if it was not an anonymous assignment. So I've got all the names displayed because it's not anonymous. Um, you see the details the same. I can upload on behalf of a student now. Just click on this little up arrow um, and then I could put in an assignment on their behalf. Um, similar to what you can do in version one. Um, that's not possible with anonymous marking because you don't know which size student is which. If I click on grade, even though they haven't submitted, you'll see I get a little warning about what's going to happen next, but I can basically add a grading template, which will let me sort of grade nothing, if you will. So if there was an offline assignment, but I wanted to use grade mark, then I can do this. I've got this little grade template now. If I click edit again, yep, it's going to warn me that the due date hasn't passed. That's fine. Perhaps this is a draft, so I'm happy to mark before the due date. Um, and this will then launch the document viewer. You can see that actually rather than a submission, because I've got this grade template, it's just kind of a blank piece of paper with a tenant in logo on it. This gives me a nice space where I can use all the different tools. So I could add quick marks, I can add some text to here. Um, yep, just write something. Um, if I wanted to give feedback, perhaps for a presentation or some other offline activity that taken place. Um, I can add an overall text comment if I want to, or a voice comment. Um, so, and I can add that rubric that we attached earlier, um, and I could mark with a rubric, um, perhaps for a presentation. So that might be something that's quite useful. I can use the arrows to navigate if I want to, and then when I'm done, just close it, um, as you would with version one. The actual document viewer should look mostly the same. So that's turn it in version two. Hope you found it fairly straightforward to use.